Hey, everybody, welcome to week number two. Um, I hope that you had a great week number one. Week number one really spent a lot of time just getting you used to the to the to the course and giving you some of that foundational work. Uh, so um, I'm not going to say it was easy last week. There was a lot of little things to be working on, but uh, we're going to turn our attention to module number two, week number two. And we're going to start ratcheting it up and including writing our first uh, writing assignment, our first writing project. OK, so um, module number two, the overview of summarizing what they said. So last week we talked about how communication is a conversation, right? Like I produce this message and I share it and you take that message and digest it and then you share your response and then I reply back and forth and back and forth. Right. So what we're going to do this week is really focus on the they say. And in particular, we're going to be looking at how to summarize what they say. So if you take like a source, you get a source, you get a piece of work, you get a piece of, uh, of information, whatever it might be, right? The thing we're looking at is what does it say? What are they trying to communicate? Now, part of that is just the literal message, right? Like they talked about this, they talked about this, they talked about this. But the other part of that is what do they mean by that? And then after I go to that step where I'm looking broadly at what they're sharing, then I start to drill in a little bit and then I start to react to it. What did I get out of it? What did it make me feel? Uh, what is my reaction to this, my gut level reaction to this, right? Um, if, for instance, if you think about a sad movie, you know, the, the literal meaning or the literal action of that, you know, it's a sad story and something happens and something happens and something happens, right? But your reaction to that is you cry or you choke up or you feel really bad, right? That's your reaction. That's what we're looking for. So we're saying, hey, here's what they said. Here's what they shared. Here's that information. And this is how I reacted to it. And that's what our first writing assignment is going to be. So we start off with this summary of what's going on, of how we're doing it. And then we're going to take a quick look at our the instruction for this writing assignment number one. Now, the process will be this. This week, by the end of the week, you'll turn in your first part of this assignment, the first half of this assignment. You will get some feedback from me. Uh, we'll talk about some other things. And then you will take and revise that. And the final draft of this will be due at the end of week number three. The objective here is to show your critical thinking. And so what we want to do is we want to really be able to dig deep into this is what they say, but this is what they meant, right? Like they said this, but this is what it really means. And then how does that make me feel? What's my reaction? What do I think of that? You know, if you think about, you know, again, you know, in today's society, you know, politics and, and political messaging that is so huge right now, right? And, and, and so word choice matters. They said this, but what do they mean over here? Um, one of the, the examples I always like to use, which would you rather be killed or murdered, right? The end result is still the same, but one has a different connotation than the other. And one is a little bit more violent, than, potentially more violent than another, right? And, and so you think about the word choice and the language and the type of examples and it's reading between the lines, what do they really mean when they say this, right? What were they trying to share with us? And then how'd that make me feel? What was my reaction? I look at it, I see it, and then this is where I'm coming from. Now, the final version of this paper, so the final draft, the, the final version, will be 750 words. So your first draft, you're looking at somewhere around 350 to 400 words, okay? And you're going to use either APA or MLA style. It's going to start with a really strong introduction, and we're going to talk about introductions this week. You're going to give a summary of the closed reading that you selected, right? So you have to start with, I read this thing, and here it is. Don't, uh, let me rephrase that. You don't want to say, I read a thing. You want to say, here's an article, and then summarize it. Think about how you would share that with somebody else who hadn't read it yet, and they would need to know those big elements, right? And so this is the they say, right? And then your response. And this is where you say, this is what I took from it. This is how I reacted to it. This was my feelings about it afterwards. Here's where I am coming from. Okay. So half of the paper is going to be the summary and half of it's going to be the reaction. The key to the reaction is going to be showing where that reaction comes from. Right. Like, for instance, if you saw Top Gun 2, right, the second Top Gun movie, 
And he said, oh my God, I was on the edge of my seat. Okay, that's your reaction. But what about that movie made you sit on the edge of your seat? So you have to be able to point back to that and say, well, it was the fighter scene when they were zipping through the, uh, the, the, the ravines and the valleys and they're really close to the wall. They were just turning back and forth. I was on the end of my seat. I was just so nervous the whole time. You refer back to the text and say, this part here made me feel this, right? And, and that is really key because it's your reaction. You, you can have any reaction you want. There's no right or wrong answer to that. But you need to be able to explain where that reaction comes from. And that's where you point back to the text and say, in this part. You could refer to it in general, saying in the third paragraph or in the part where they discuss this. You could actually use you could use actual quotes or a combination of angels, right? So, but you want to be clear as to what made you feel that way. Now, again, this week you're going to do half of the draft. Now, the assumption is that you would start and you would stop somewhere in the half. The idea is that when you turn that in, you get that feedback that we could say, okay, you're going in the right direction. You've got a good plan. Keep going or whatever. Um, I know that there's a lot of things here that we want to kind of cover. For instance, sometimes, you know, it's hard to get the paper started, right? Like you have this thesis, you know what you want to talk about, but you just don't know how to get it started. You don't know that, that the introductory device. Okay, fine. Put that thesis, start with your first main point. You can come back and work that introduction, right? Especially if something pops up in your paper that you think, ah, you know, I could use that for my introduction. I could refer to that. I'd use that as my example, right? And, and get this paper started. So I don't know if you have to be exactly linear with the writing. Uh, it's not like, oh, here's the first half, right? It's three pages long. Here's a page and a half, right? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be linear. I also want to say you don't only have to write half of the paper so the assignment is the half and if you do the half you're fine and you've done exactly what you need to do but i always like to encourage people to write as much of the paper as they can even all of it if possible because the more you have to turn in the more feedback you're going to get right and so if you only do half of the paper and you get feedback on that half well the other half that you write you're not getting that feedback on right you're not getting that direction or whatever and so the more that you can turn in, the more the feedback you can get to make sure that you have a full message and that the whole thing is working well. Again, you're only required to do half. If you only do half, that is perfectly fine. There's no extra credit for doing more, but you do get more feedback. And it's something that I would really suggest uh, that you think about doing if possible. It also makes it a little bit easier in week three because then you don't have to do as much, right? Like you put in the work now, you don't have to do as much later. Um, but again, that is kind of up to you of how you best work with things, okay? Um, we then have the closed read, uh, closed research theme reading check-in. Uh, this is where you're going to pick two texts. Now, again, you picked one last week, so you're going to pick two new ones this week. And you're going to be answering these kinds of questions. Which one did you find more interesting? Or which would you recommend to somebody outside the class to read? So the idea is that we're continuing to read new articles, we're continuing to read more material, and that you're having a broader exposure. Part of this is, you know, the 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 uh, the work of the they say, right? Like I can say, here's what they said, here's what it's about, that summary kind of piece. It's also going to help you because the more you read, when we get to the end of the semester and we're doing the argumentative, you're familiar with a broad range of views and topics uh, that you can use to develop your final uh, paper. All right, so you've got that to work with. And then we have the discussion board. Um, and this is going back to the, did you hear what they said about that, All right? And it again builds on the they say and I feel. They said this and this is what I feel. All right, so you're gonna take one of the closed readings. This could be one of the three that you've done already, week one or the two for this week, or it could be a totally another one. Any of those are fine, okay? And you're going to write your initial post. You're going to select the theme, okay? You're going to give the author and the title so we know which one we're talking about. And then talk about two of the they say moves that they use in the reading. So the, the tutorials and the, and the book work and those lecture notes, uh, you're going to use those ideas to show how they created this message. And then you will look broadly and deeply, okay? And they give you some questions and things to think about, okay? <clears throat> drilling down into it deeper that's being critically and looking broadly how does it fit into the larger conversation right like where does it go from here where do you take it from there 
and then you're going to respond to at least two of your peers okay and there's some things to be thinking about uh with those responses <clears throat> now a couple things about the discussion boards to repeat to for a reminder uh first off your initial post should really be put up by wednesday or thursday this week uh the idea is that if we can get those posts up first and early that in the end of the week or the second half of the module then people have more you know more uh posts to read and respond to right uh if you go on and you just put like here's my post and you do two quick responses first off you may not have any responses or very limited selection of responses you may not have responses to responses to respond to did you catch all those if you wait to the end of the week no one is really having a chance to comment on what you have to say and, and the idea is that the discussion board is a conversation. It continues a conversation of debate, uh, a sharing of ideas. It's an open forum, okay? So the best case is that you go on in the early week, Wednesday, Thursday, you post that up, your initial response, and then at least another time or two, you come on and you respond to other people. To get the most points, and again, look at the rubric because it's very clear on there, to get the most points, you need to be on the discussion board on multiple days. Because again, we're wanting to have that conversation, right? And that you reply to at least two, but if you want the full points, you have to do more than two, right? So again, please make sure that you're looking at that rubric so you have a very clear idea of how your points are earned and distributed there. Uh, I think that you're going to find that very useful too, because I think that once you get into that and you start to see what other people are reading, it's going to help you like, I didn't read that article, but I got a sense of what it is, right? And that's going to help broaden out that knowledge base and your exposure to those readings. Uh, we're going to have uh, some information about introductions and how to write introductions. I cannot tell you how important introductions are, because this is where you draw the reader in. And this is where you show them very clearly, this is what this is going to be about. This right, my purpose in writing this is this, right? Now, think about, in the real world, no one ever has to read what you write, right? And no one has to. Now, in a class setting, you're going to turn something in, I'm going to have to read it, right? So the introduction serves a different purpose for me. But in the real world or outside of academia or wherever, you know you produce this message but you have to draw people in you have to make sure that they want to read it right and that's where you work with that attention getter and then that thesis statement makes a very clear statement up to the topic and the nature and and and, and the goal of that writing because that you know people get interested and then they know exactly what they're getting into right and, and so the introduction really works to set up those expectations for the writing uh for the writing experience or the reading experience if you think about when you go when when you go into a new restaurant first impressions matter right they they count and there's a lot of thought and design that go into a lot of these big chain or big you know uh, corporate type restaurants and because they want to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting into if you go to Texas Roadhouse it's loud there's loud music, or, you know, it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of rowdy a little bit, right? You can't get upset because like, oh, I didn't know it was going to be so loud. I had a bad time here. Well, no, from moment one, you, you have that experience, right? As you walk up to the door, the music's already loud outside. You come in, it's enclosed. There's a lot of people waiting. It's loud. The music's loud. you got all this stuff going on around you, right? The expectation is set early, okay? So when we look at the introduction, evoke the reader's interest obviously you draw them in you get them interested and we'll talk about a lot of those different things that you might do to draw in the reader it might be a shocking fact it might be a quote uh it could be a definition but i only like to use definitions if you're going to like people think it's this but it really is this right like people think it means this but it really means that um that contrast really helps people see that otherwise it feels very sophomoric uh, to use a dictionary definition. Um, I think also too, if you can use a story or a very clear, vivid example that people can empathize with, right? That really lets people see that. You're gonna describe the topic, you're gonna let people see exactly what they're getting into, okay? Um, you know, if you, if you think about Netflix, right? 
like it's very easy because there's all of that stuff on netflix you can watch 30 seconds two three minutes you like, yep i'm out i don't want that there's stuff you know nothing grabs you early on right and and, and, that, and that's how that that's how that game is played and then they use that information to make sure they only give you stuff that you're going to be interested in right well you don't get that in writing so you have to make sure that your audience is interested and knows exactly what they're getting and then the thesis statement and this is a very clear one sentence statement of purpose okay you're not going to say i am going to write about or my paper will be about or my main idea is you're not going to use the first person in there okay but you're going to very clearly set up this is the topic okay for instance if you really if you read an article and you really liked it this was a really good article because okay and then give us some sort of preview as to what it is you set that up right here's an article it was really engaging interesting boring slow offbeat whatever and then that information right that preview and that lets the reader very clearly know what the purpose of this is uh so you're going to get some information about introduction i'm gonna uh i'm gonna be honest with you they are kind of intimidating and they can be difficult because it's just like how do i get started and i know a lot of times if people get stuck on the introduction they just kind of spin their wheels spin their wheels spin their wheels and they never get into the paper if you do get stuck like that you got a solid thesis what about that introduction later get into the paper and start writing it, okay it is very important but it's so important that you better do it right the first time and then finally at the end of the module then that's where we're going to turn in this half draft okay and there's again the same information that we have uh, i'm going to again remind you that this first draft is or the half draft I'm sorry, i keep saying first draft it's a half draft uh and that is what's required the half is required but the more you can provide the more feedback you're going to get and the more information you're going to be able to use to make your final version even better so anyway as you get into module two i i hope that uh i hope that i gave you some advice and some and some direction of how to get started uh, please make sure that if you have any questions at all you're reaching out you're sending me that email like, hey, I got a problem with this. Or I don't know what to do with this or what do you mean by that? OK, please make sure you're reaching out like that. Email is always the best way to get a hold of me because I can answer those emails in between any of the other things that I'm doing. Second best is that text message, because, again, I can answer it, you know, at some point like, hey, here's the thing I need to do. OK, if you email me, OK, please like don't say, hey, I've got a question. I need some help. What you need is I have a question about this assignment and give me that question. OK, because then I can respond back to you with an answer. You know, if you say, hey, I've got a problem, I'll be like, OK, what assignment? And then I have to wait for you to come. In. And so it slows the process down. Right. So you probably want like, hey, I've got a question about this assignment. Here's my question. And I can reply back to you. If you send me a text message. And again, that is that is OK. It's not the fastest way to get back you know, for me to, to, to get back with you. If you do text message me, please include your name, this class, and again, your question, okay? Because without, you know, on an email, I get your names, I know who you are, you know, it has the class name and everything. Uh, but on a text message, I won't get that. So please make sure you include that. You are, you know, it is okay to call me. It is not the best way to get a hold of me because I won't answer the phone during the school day normally. And then I have a couple hours and I'm back into classes or, or something in the evenings. Uh, you know, ball games with the kids or whatever. So it's not the quickest way to get a hold of me. But if you do, if if, if that is the best way for you, uh, please, you know, use that. Make sure again to include your name, the class, and very specifically what the what the question is. If you have to leave me a message, right? That way I can respond back to you quicker with the information that you are looking for. But please make sure you're reaching out. Okay. Also, please continue. Uh, to do the things that you are doing to stay on top of stuff. I know that a fall semester, you know, you're kind of excited about school and you're still kind of up and, and, and things are still lined out pretty well for you. Uh, so again, continue to do those things, continue to make sure that you are creating that time and that space to work, that you're working ahead whenever possible, you're staying up to date, you're using that calendar. Uh, because again, if you get a little bit behind, you know, your grades will come down a little bit, it creates stress. And then it gets a little bit harder and harder as you go along. It's an eight-week course. We move really fast. All right. Hey, guys, I hope that you have a great second week. Uh, I, I am excited to see what you guys come up with. 
with your readings and your reactions. And good luck, everybody.